The origin of SAP. The story of SAP's origins with ICI Europa Fibers GmbH and their journey from punch cards to modern ERP systems is fascinating. It's remarkable how early challenges in manual processing led to the development of what would become one of the world's leading enterprise software companies. The transition from punch cards to integrated systems like SAP ERP revolutionized how businesses manage their operations. It's a testament to innovation driven by practical needs in large-scale industrial settings. ICI Europa Fibers ICI stands for Imperial Chemical Industries, a company with 220,000 employees in more than 65 countries, one of the biggest chemical companies in the world, compared with DuPont. And, as is sadly often the case with large companies, it disappeared into thin air in 2007. It was liquidated. They produced fibers for textiles, for clothing, for carpets, and for technical yarns. Tires, for example, or parachute silk. These fibers were manufactured in Oestringen. Before the foundation, their IT manager, Hermann Meyer, requested additional consulting from IBM after IBM machines released the computer named 36020, the best and fastest computer at that time. So Dietmar Hopp came to the plant in Oestringen and brought Hasso Plattner with him. Hermann Meyer wanted to have a better system. Back then, you had to use a punch card to enter every step, every command, bit by bit. Sometimes this kind of program had more than 200 punch cards. Picture the scene. Three or four people were busy checking purchase requisitions or purchase orders as shuttle cards. They had what needed to be ordered written on them. It was all punched. And this went into IT, and from there, back to punch cards. Then from punch cards to a list. The list was checked to see if everything was right, and then it was returned if it was okay. Those three or four people were the ones we were talking about. Then the order was on the table two to three days later, which they then dispatched. The standard way was written down, punched, then there was an error in it, and the error list appeared. Then it was punched again, and they almost despaired. Back then, IBM didn't have any software to sell yet, as it turned out with hindsight. Software was a totally separate package. They only sold machines. It was a stroke of luck for us that we started out on a relatively large scale. But we didn't have any options with smaller companies because their computers didn't give them what they needed. They were fortunate. They didn't actually know them face to face. It was more hearsay. They were the three subconsciously crazy ones. The start of real-time software. There was mutual trust between Herman Meyer and Dietmar Hopp. They got on really well. That kind of topic was totally new. It had never been seen before. Real-time processing was not yet available. Herman Meyer was their IT manager. He brought in the IBM guys, Hopp and Plattner, who developed the online system for order processing. He recognized the potential of material procurement and data volume. He was actually the one who was impressed by our ideas and facilitated the whole thing. He facilitated it massively. SAP was founded based on Herman Meyer's commitment. While it was being founded, they had an official order of more than 638,000 Deutschmarks. That was the green light for what is now SAP. The handling of business transactions in real time was not considered useful for a long time because it required too much effort. You had to explain what real time is to people. What does it mean for you, for your working environment? Jobs also changed as a result of this new way of working. So there wasn't anything comparable here in Europe at that point. This was the approach that we took with the order processing area, telling them they would have it in real time. You don't have to wait for error lists. You enter orders on the screen, see errors immediately, and also see productive things like, is inventory available, and so on. Real time was their main goal from the outset. Dietmar Hopp, together with Hasso Plattner, wrote an online program overnight on the computer, which was leased from IBM. And that's what the SAP guys developed. They designed an online program able to process all these files at the same time using screens. They had the privilege of being allowed to access the machine room, and that's how we got to know the men. Mr. Hop, when he turned up with his box of 250 punch cards, wanted to import this program quickly. It contained errors again. He had to add a card to the entire program, and then this had to be converted again, and a new machine deck created again, and that had to be played back to system resistance for the program to be able to run. That's how we got to know the men. 
Hasso Plattner had his program with punch cards in a box, not particularly secure. He went into the IT room and got stuck on the door somehow. Then all the punch cards, the whole program, ended up on the floor. That was two days' work, and everything had to be rearranged and rewritten. After this event, all punch card blocks were then identified using colored pencils at SAP so that if this ever happened again, it would take less time to sort the punch cards. A punch card command was a thing. For example, compare logic character or print routine. And those were individual commands. The punch cards had 80 digits, so the first screens also had 80 digits. Then there was a continuation asterisk in column XYZ to let you know that there was text on the back. Everyone was always really impressed by Hasso Plattner. He sat down at the puncher and then programmed directly in what was called the assembler, the machine language of that time. It was phenomenal, but Hasso Plattner did it and wrote the programs directly. Work began at all levels, for the users, as well as for the SAP guys, with SAP having now been founded. It was a challenge. The program, called MyAS, Material Information and Accountant System, went live on January 1st, 1973. With 30,000 purchase orders, 5,000 purchase orders had to be transferred on the weekends before December 31st. It was really an achievement for everyone, by everyone. There were crises, of course, and when crises hit, you need to be able to trust each other. Even within ICI, there were times when the head office in England or in the Netherlands with furrowed brows wondered whether it would work. Herman Meyer had a vision and he achieved it, even against our investors' wishes. These two pillars, Dietmar Hopp and Hermann Meyer, were brilliant. Other area managers responsible for purchasing, the warehouse or financial accounting, were also very closely linked to Hasso and Dietmar. They had very close contact with each other. That is how some of the crises were able to be overcome. The system of SAP is growing. The new MIAS online system meant it was suddenly no longer necessary to carry punch cards back and forth fill them out or manage them. That took a great deal of effort. It was now done online. This meant that they entered their orders on the screen and received the printed purchase orders from IT the next day. Corrections, as was previously the case, were no longer necessary because the control functions meant that everything was checked immediately at the time of entry, making incorrect entries no longer possible. That work process was radically reduced. They then started to do an initial intake in accounts payable and materials management. And when they finalized this concept, they also found that if they combined this with auto processing, meaning adding the creditors, they would have a whole system for financial accounting. After they discussed this within the company and with SAP, Hasso Plattner, Dietmar Hopp, Klaus Schira, and Klaus Wellenreuther were very enthusiastic. This allowed them to offer a complete system in addition to operating the system in real-time mode, integration was the second most prominent feature of the system. ICI was also leading the way here, continuing to promote this idea. And this integration was not only between purchasing and warehouse, or between purchasing and location and requirements planning, for example. It was also integration that ultimately stretched as far as financial accounting, commitments management, and cost accounting and later extended to the cost accounting system. This entering of fully integrated relationships through a one-off original business process truly was an outstanding feature of the SAP software. This provided access for accounting, warehouse receipt, warehouse issue, and material management. It was all integrated into this one program. The challenges. You have to remember that a mainframe computer back then had a 512K memory. It was capable of a lot. There were the tape machines, removable disks, the chain printer, and the punch card puncher. That was their toolkit back in the day. They had started on a 64KB machine, and the SAP system ran on it with full functionality. Several hundred users were connected to the system back then. The central ICI development center and everything that was developed outside at Knoll, Grinsweig, and Hartmann was then incorporated into the standard which they put together in Ostringen. It wasn't easy, but it was vital. Some of the challenges were quite banal. For example, the computer system capacities were very limited. You had to program with memory in mind at that time, and everything was still in assembler at the beginning. There were restrictions due to the coding and the limitation of 4K buyer for the address area. 
It goes without saying that this was a major challenge in programming. Data was backed up once a week, which was outsourced just in case the building burnt down, for example. And where did they store the backup for the first few years? In Mr. Hop's old house. On Friday afternoons after backing up the data, they went to Mr. Hop's and stored the SAP magnetic tapes in his house. That way, if the building burnt down, the inventory would still be there. There were also terminations time and again later on because somebody would write a program that destroyed something somewhere in the memory. Since there was no memory protection, you would spend nights on end looking for errors that arose as a result of such problems. The first goal was to create a solid foundation so that everything didn't have to be done two or three times. Then there were eight years of slow development until liberation came with better computers. This meant that mid-sized companies were finally able to experience their software, which many of them then did. ICI, a sales office of SAP, what was great in Oostringen was that the system was demonstrated by the departments of ICI to external interested parties. So when a buyer came from Knoll, they didn't want to talk to the IT guy. They wanted to talk to an expert. It was a once-in-a-lifetime hit. The ICI employees were always holding some kind of demo for external customers, who then became regular SAP customers. Win-win situation. There was a strong hierarchical formation, but the flexibility and willingness were there, or the conditions were in place to create new things. There was a feeling of starting afresh, and they believe that this story has also been adopted by the employees or the founders of SAP, and this will continue to be cultivated. People had an answer for every new idea that cropped up and that helped optimize the entire internal work processes in a way you could never have imagined before. The collaboration was fantastic. Hop, Plattner, and their colleagues, who were also there in the meantime, worked with the Oostringen employees on the analysis side. ICI really was a perfect first customer, and this has been proven, but it goes without saying that it also took a great deal of effort. In an amazingly short time, SAP developed into one of the 10 largest manufacturers of standard software worldwide.